What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of video games, we're going to be checking out Disciples Liberation. I have never played any of the previous Disciples titles, but from what I understand, this is like a spin-off. And so this is a tactical strategy RPG set in a grimdark fantasy world where we're going to be doing lots of stabbing, lots of murder. It apparently has some kind of like emergent morality system. All that kind of stuff. We're going to dive on in, take a look at it, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you wanted to do exactly that, uh, you can check out the links down below and I'll have my Discord, my Twitch stream, and my Twitter all neatly arranged for you because I'm a go-getter like that, baby. I'm a go-getter. I like to make sure you have all the things you need in the spots where you need them. So anyways, Disciples Liberation. We've got about 25-30 minutes to kill, so we're going to dive on in and give that a go. You return from your lookout to the sewers below the church of St. Darchild. Orion, your best friend, is asleep. Were it not for his snoring, you would think his motionless body was dead. Ori, you alright? What? What? Oh, Avi, I, I thought you were a church guard. I don't know what's worse, your snoring or this stench. How can you sleep down here? I, I can sleep and drink anywhere. It's a gift. What time is it? Just past twilight. The priest's holy hands have gone, leaving three unaccounted for that I've seen. Right. Well, uh, how are we going to do this? All right, so this is our first, like, decision in between the two of us. Uh, no witnesses. Kill everybody. Yeah, that sounds like a splatter cat strategy right there. Listen, 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 listen. Stealth is for people that don't know how to crush ass. And that's what we're going to do out here. We're just going to spend our whole time just crushing it. Find an enemies, beat their skulls in, find the next energy. Like, you just move down the hall like a berserker, you know what I mean? You shout incoherently, you drool on yourself, you rend your clothing, you just become like an archon of fear. Nobody's ever terrified of somebody sneaking around in the dark, man. They're terrified of that guy coming straight down the middle way, just... Aah! So that's what we're gonna do. We know the Church of St. Darchild is always guarded, even at night. We have to go in and kill everyone. The contract didn't say anything about guards. If they see our faces, the Empire will hunt us and our families. Ori, we have to be thorough. You seem nervous. We've done a lot of contracts, but killing's never easy. So, yes, I'm nervous. Aren't you? I mean, I don't know, dude. We can lie. We're doing the right thing, dude. Yeah, we're doing the right... Th Killing everybody in this place indiscriminately to get after our mercenary target is obviously the right thing to do. There's no moral qualms here the whatsoever. Said this priest is as corrupt as they come. We're doing the people a favor. We're basically heroes. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So we go in there, take care of the priest, the guards, and any other witnesses, then we get out. Simple as that. Simple as that. All right, so a companion's been added on in. You can pause the video right here and read his description if you want. He looks sort of roguish, would be my guess. And so now we are actually in the game official, and you pretty much move around the same way you move around in Diablo. You just kind of click and hold, and then you'll run where you need to go. I know we're in the sewers, but what is this stuff? These side things don't have voicing, but you'd figure they would when the characters are having, like, you know, little dialogues with each other and stuff. Impure. His eye sees all. Alright, so we've got a battle in front of us. Uh, we can set up our ranks. Can I, can I, yeah, I want to edit that right now. Let's, let's put you right there. And then, actually, I'm going to try and draw him back to like a corner, maybe. We'll go back over here. There we go. That looks good to me. I'm just going to shift it a little bit to the left, and then we'll just hope for the best here. Okay, so at the top of the screen, it looks like we've got an initiative track. And it look, can I rotate the camera at all? Oh, I can. Nice. Okay, with Q and E. Sweet, dude. All right, so we've got two of these burly-looking guards over here. The character models actually look pretty good. They're pretty detailed. Those are pretty spicy character models. They look all right. Uh, I'm just going to wait here, dude. Let them come to me. Like, why would I, you know... I don't know, dude. Why, why would I put myself at risk by running into them? Uh, these little pips above your head, the blue one is for movement, the red one is for attacking. You also have, like, a yellow one, but, like, it seems like the yellow one can be used for either, like, a big move or an attack, but it's kind of, like, a little bit weird. And so, anyways, you can attack twice if you, like, are already in base contact, you attack, and then you can attack again using your yellow one, but, uh, you can't if you, like, move. You can only move and attack, attack twice, or, like, uh, move twice, basically. 
I don't know if I said that both ways, but you know. I'm gonna move up to here just to defend my mans right here. And then I think it would be nice if we could get a flonk off. Like, that would be really good. Oh, I could have sent her to the end of the initiative. That would have been the smarter play. All right, if you end with any of your APs still available, I'm going to put him in stealth real fast. If you end with any of your APs still available, uh, you get healed, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to move him over to here for a nice little pincer attack, and then we'll kind of see where these guys go. Ow. Okay, I like that attack animation. That's got like a nice little sound effect wrapped up on it too. Wow, they really laid into her on the first turn. Good God. Okay, they went after her extra medium spicy. All right, so I've got an AoE as my secondary ability, so I'm going to do that since they decided to line up all effectively right there. We've demoralized them. I don't know exactly what that means, but you can right-click on any of these characters and it'll give you a model viewer, and you can also take a look and see. Oh, it actually literally means they've lost morale. Okay, fair enough. Um, I don't really have much else to do, so I'm just going to end my turn right there to get some HP back. I'm going to move you over to here, and if you've got people on opposite ends, you get a flanking bonus. I'm going to go hard in the paint on this guy. Bow! That stealth strike right there. Light him up. Make him bleed. Ow, stop it! Well, that's just downright unpleasant of you. It looks like they change their stance once they reach like a certain level of wounded, too which I think is actually pretty good. We'll throw out a strike right there for 133 damage. I do like the animations on like the damage numbers and also just on the character attacks. I feel like they look pretty okay. Uh, we'll heal up right there and then from right here, we'll stab you in the back. And then I'm gonna move over to here so that we get the flank on this side. There it is. I do like that it's clearly denoted that you've got a flank right there. That's good. I do think she could be hunched over and breathing a little bit heavier. It is obvious that she's changed her attack stance, but I feel like you could really sell like the, uh, uh, you know, like the I'm wounded thing uh, a little bit better. Oh, I can go stealth again? Yeah, let's go stealth again so we get that big hit on this guy. Let's do that. Nice. So he's now kind of busted up too. It actually looks like it's a, it looks like everybody has kind of the same universal like wounded animation right there. It kind of looks like they're standing with sort of the same similar posture. Okay, well I don't really have anything else that I can run on you guys, so, you know, enjoy getting stabbed in the face, I guess. We've killed our first batch of guards. We got 625 coins, a little bit of XP right there. I'll take it, I'll take it. Move ourselves on up. Well, the sewers clearly aren't as safe as we thought they'd be. We'll fight our way through, just like we planned. Voice acting's actually pretty solid. It's better than I expected. Normally, like, Calypso, when it comes to voice acting and things like that, like, Calypso is one of those companies that's kind of, like, all over the place. Like, sometimes they produce, like, really rad stuff, and then other times you're like, huh, I see what you were going for, but maybe not for me. Wow, that was a really cool animation, too. All right. Well, that opened up something, but it's not that gate, so I assume we gotta go back this way. Yeah, it opened that door right there. Okay, rolling through the sewers, they are full of poo gas. Kinda smelly, I don't like it. Gonna get tetanus, gonna suck ya. Dude, come down into a dungeon on an adventure and get Ebola. That's exactly what's gonna happen out here, man. Is that guard like over here? Is that what that means? Or is that like my main quest? I don't know. Let's check all the pathways first real fast and kind of see what we've got going on here. Oh, there's a guy over here. Undead minions. They, they're guarding a treasure though. Do I want the treasure? Since our HP doesn't heal in between fights, that sort of makes me a little bit antsy in the pantsy about taking up combat. Like, especially since I don't know where any, like, supplementary healing might be at. But then again, I ain't no punk. Let's go fight some zombies, man. Alright, so with our current setup, I'm just going to kind of scooch people forward. And we'll see what happens here. Yeah, just like scooching Nate a little bit. Just scooch it on out, my dudes. Oh no, he can reach me. Ew, man, you came all the way over here to burp on me? Disgusting. Maybe he won't be able to make it here, though. Well, that's unfortunate. He blocked off my flank. 
Okay, well, I'm gonna go invisible right here. And then I'm gonna move him over to here. I'm gonna move her over to here to get the flank. And we'll go ahead and back strike right there. These guys have some pretty solid HP though, so I'm a little bit worried about how this is actually actively gonna go. It seems like, oh, they regenerate by a whole bunch as well. Oh no, dude, they flanked me back. Gross, dude. You're not allowed to use my tactics on me? That's not good and right and proper. That's a that's a filthy thing to do to your boy, man. I thought we were friends, and instead, you know, you just you made me look like a fool out here. Oh well, flanking gone. No more flanking to be spoken of. Uh, let's go ahead and I will drop. Yeah, I'll drop an attack right there. I definitely we have a spell book over here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, we can actually like heal. Okay, but it's gonna cost me one of my uh, my yellow thingies. Fair enough. I, I definitely think we should heal in combat, though. I think that's a really, really good idea. I'm going to move over to here to make his flank more accessible and easy. We'll see if he breaks off right here. I don't think that he will. Yeah, 85 damage right there. Nothing to be too concerned about. That regen, though, is just like... Oof. We definitely got to work our way through that. So now we've got the flank. I do like that they've included positional buffs to the characters for doing this stuff. That's really, really good. Uh, I would definitely like to heal myself. I don't know how long that's gonna last for, but I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Oh, he's got two yellows. That's why he can attack twice. Got it. All right, well, let's see how much. Oh, we get mana back on every single turn too. So casting is actually not really like a limited resource in this game. Uh, like, so casting is something that you're expected to be doing. Like, every couple turns, we make up all the mana that we lost from doing our normal thing. Yeah, just keep cutting him up right there. I probably could have gone into stealth and done that better, but there we go. So how much healing do you get at the end of the fight? That's what I'm curious about. So, like, that last time, it brought us up to, like, midway. So it looks like it brought us up to full health right there. So it looks like you get, like, a flat percentage back at the end of the fight. Although what that number is is kind of obfuscated right now. Inside the treasure chest, what do we got? Sword of the Lost Guard. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go take a look at the character sheet. So here's our character sheet. It doesn't look like we have any option to scroll over to Orion. So I assume that he's like a temporary teammate maybe just for this mission. Because it doesn't look like I can do anything with him. We got 7 power and that gives 7 HP. Go for it. Oh cool, the graphic changed. We've got some kind of like little Gladius or like Spatha going on right now. Nice. I don't know if the armor changes. We're going to have to verify that at some point, too. We also can't look at the skill tree yet, so I wanted to see what kind of character development's going to be available over long-term play. But thus far, actually, the quality feels pretty good, both in combat and with, like, the set design of, like, the general areas. Uh, it doesn't feel too terrible. Oh, there's a guard right there. I don't know if we want to agitate him just yet. How far is he going to go? I mean, on one hand, I'm all about getting, like, extra XP. But then again, like, on the other hand... I wonder if we're going to get punished for being, like, too aggressive. So that door is shut. We need to find a lever to open that thing up. There's a lever right here. Is it going to open the treasure door? Oh, maybe it opens the entire cell block. I failed to even think about that. Uh, we've got some leather boots right there. Okay, well, let's see if it changes up the graphics then. Uh, so there's our boots. They give us one dexterity. That gives us two dexterity and some unholy resistance. But from looking at it... It looks like the graphics on your character do not change when you swap out anything other than your weapon. That's a little bit of a disappointment. You guys know me. I'm a big hound for, like, swapping out my gear and basically looking cooler. Oh, I believe that we have been caught up in the aggros. Um, we can probably, like, run them around the block. Yeah, Splattercat cast idiot. It's super effective. All right, well, let's go back over here. We'll cut to the left and see if we can find this priest guy that we're supposed to be rocking our way through. Priest? Are you here? Oh, there's a healing pool right there. Oh, there's our priesty boy. There's our priesty boy. There he is. Let's go get him. Sebastian. Sebastian, the old priest serving the Church of St. Darchild, looks up from his work to you. He's sorting through children's clothing, all of it clean and well-made and marked to be sent to orphanages across the city. He's hardly the monster you contract him, the contract made him out to be until he snarls. The rat who's been crawling our sewers reveals herself. Let the guards go and I'll spare them? You know why I'm here. But your guards don't have to die. 
Let them go and I'll spare them. The rat shows me pity. You are unique, I'll give you that. Hmm. Tell me, to what do I owe this assassination? Feeding these children? Nursing those displaced by the veil? Their young eyes will see much suffering in their lifetimes. Let them start by seeing yours. Surrounded and trapped. If ever there's a time to draw one sword, it'd probably be now. Oh, there's so many of them. Oh, we're about to get obliterated, dude. We barely survived one turn of two of these guys. Oh, no. All right, so every unit in your active squad can be put in the back line or the front line. Front line units use front line abilities and can be controlled during their turn. However, they can be targeted and defeated. Back line units only have a back line ability. They act automatically each turn and cannot be targeted or defeated directly. All of your front line units are defeated. The fight is lost. Carefully choose the back line and front line for your squad as an essential part of every strategy. What do these do? What are, what are these? An orb of regeneration. Ooh, okay. So we're going to kind of want to, like, guard these. Yeah, let's just wait it out for a minute and see what they decide to do. Holy inspiration. Okay, he gave him some motivation. He was like, hell yeah, brother. Let's do this thing. I'm ready, brother. Oh, he actually made it to me. Look at you over here being a go-getter. Look at you over here being good at your job. Since that guy's a priest, I've got a bad feeling he's going to be healing these dudes up. That's the suspicion that I have. Okay, so first things first, we go invisible on you. Uh, because if they pull off a nasty little flanky boy over here, it's going to be gross. Put you in right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get the flank here, but the fact of the matter is, if I get double, yeah, I was going to say, if I get double dogpiled here, wow, they move so much further than I expect them to. I'd like them, so, like, it's hard to make tactical decisions when I don't know the move range of my enemies. Uh, my suggestion would be that when you mouse over the enemy, it should show you a preview of where they can move to. Wow, they are only going after my rogue. Gross, dude. Oh, super gross. That was kind of unexpected. What's he doing? I didn't do that. Quickly. I don't exactly understand why he just auto played his turn. Did his morale break or something? How do I how do I tell what his morale is? Stand you die today. I will carve his sword on you. Huh. Oh, maybe it's because he's taunted. There will be no yeah, if they keep spreading that damage around, we're about to have issues. Wait, I won? I didn't feel like I was winning. I'm going to be honest with you. That was like, there was no cutscene or anything. So I'm sort of like, uh, what? Ori, uh, something's wrong. Yeah, we're losing. Your vision blurs and pain shoots through your right arm to your fingertips, so severe that it feels like your skin might burst apart, and then it does. Uh, help me. From your flesh, darkness emerges like a swirling black pearl. In it, you see night, and the night sees you. A corona of molten light crackles forth from the pitch. Impossible! Stand back, fools! All of you, back! It's a portal! Go! Now! You and Orion leap through the sweltering heat into the void and are immediately swallowed whole. Behind you, the portal closes, leaving no trace other than the black scars on the stone floor and the fear in the hearts of all. I guess that's one of those scripted fights you're supposed to lose, but... From the cosmic tear, you are hurtled bewilderingly forward. Never before had mortal feet touched this soil. Nor mortal eyes seen this ancient sight.
sprawling, ancient, longing to be rediscovered. Until now, this is your true home. This is your fate. All right, so Orion follows you as you approach the Forgotten City. At its gates, a word is carved in foreign glyphs. It reads Ilion, which you know to mean City of Sacred Angels, although you've never been able to read the markings and, before. And, and ancient. Uh, it could be Dwarven. No, I think it's older than that. Older. Look at the stone. It wasn't cut. It's like it was formed from the bedrock. And these glyphs match the glyphs on my armor. You're worried about your belt, Abby? You just ripped a hole in space. We're lost in some forgotten city. I'm sorry. I just haven't seen you do that since we were kids. It scared me. I know. I couldn't control it then, but this time was different. Ori, I can't shake the feeling. It was fate. Yeah, that's often what I blame it on when I explode into a giant black smoke monster uh, that beams of light cut through. It's the, it's the classic, you know... It's, it's the classic explanation for law enforcement. You know, I'm totally in control whenever I burst into a giant black smoke elemental. Let's look around, but be on your guard. Just because this place looks abandoned doesn't mean it is. Your mind races as you explore the landscape. Amongst the rubble, you see ghosts of marketplaces, forges, homes, and families. How incredible this place must have been once. I get a castle? Damn, dude, things escalate quickly. Alright, so I can make this my own and upgrade it during my journey across Navendar. Right now, there's not much here except for the castle. Okay, let's go to the castle then. I got a castle. Yeah, yeah. I got a castle. Oh, whoa. Oh. Everybody just be jealous of me and my castle. Alright, so it looks like I can... Do I need to talk to Orion, maybe? Weeks pass. You train tirelessly in the courtyards and under the pavilions, slowly honing your power. By night, you spend your hours exploring the castle grounds. One night, Ryan follows you to a giant structure spiraling up from the rubble of a forgotten land. Inside, you discover a great hall enshrining a stone table and upon it a familiar sight. Look, a map of Navendar. If it's accurate, this city's at the center of the world. How has nobody found this place? You look down at the sprawling map of Navendar, dreaming of what this old castle might have been or what it could be. Hey, Avi, when we first got back here, you said something that's been playing in my head every night. At the city gates, you said it was fate. Uh, what is our fate? Mm, I don't know. To liberate the... Yeah, dude, you gotta make it sound like you're the hero. As the power was pulsing through me, I closed my eyes and could see this place. We've turned it into a refuge for all the people of Nevendar. You wanted to protect everyone since we were kids. We've been scraping by, going from one low-paying contract to the next, and now we're trapped here, almost out of food and water. Right, but you've been honing your power. Any day now, you'll be able to control it. We'll get out of here. Or we stay. This could be the home that we always wanted. It needs a little work, but imagine it. Orion looks around you, inspecting the hall. Yeah, he seems to say to himself as he places hands on his hips. This'll do nicely. Fine. Fine? Yeah, fine. But the Empire's going to be looking for us, and they always find what they're looking for, even here. Then we hire protection, which means we're going to need allies. And money. And ale. Lots of ale. Hey, I'm already sold. Where do we start? You point attention to the map. With cunning, any of the denizens of Navender would make a strong ally, but where do you start? Oh, I don't know. Uh, who do we trust? I don't. Do we want to be the Unholy Legion? I'll keep training my power, and then we'll head for... Okay, so we start as a neutral faction, but our choices will improve or worsen our standings diplomatically with the factions. The better your standing, the more benefits you get. Your standing affects the units you can recruit, the equipment you use, and the rewards that you earn. It also impacts how certain denizens react to you. Okay, choose your alliance as well. Okay, so we can go to Hurik. It looks like they're trying to crown a champion of the pit over here. We can go to the Plains of the Widows, the great seat of the Empire. Castle Hale is now an outpost of rebels, thieves, and warriors. We've got the Whitelands. Uh, it looks like elves live there. And then we've got Greyleaf. And 
apparently it's a dangerous journey to get there. I'm going to the Plains of the Widows. It seems the easiest because it says easy on it. That's, you know. Oh, I got to right click it? Okay. Apparently we got to do the click and hold down thing. Lots of games incorporating that nowadays. I don't see what's wrong with a normal brisk click. But the universe seems to want me to click and hold lately. Sprawling outwards like a quiet ocean, the gentle undulations of the plains cut a wide path to Castle Hale, which towers over the scene in the distance. Widows, the one place where outlaws can be free of the Vale's persecution. Hey, look at that. The voice acting's back. Uh, in case I didn't say it previously in the video, this is a closed beta that the developers sent over to me. So, like, this game is not ready for release yet. They're sending it out for testing. So there may be little voice lines and stuff that are missing in the overall adventure. Let's hope the Mercenary King is in good spirits. Do you think he'll hold court with us? He's the Mercenary King? We're mercenaries. It's a match made in the four heavens. And if not, the Plains makes beer. Lots of it. You know, you can't spell hail without ale. Um, yeah, for sure. When we get there, follow my lead. Your charm works better on drunks than diplomats. We might still get there before nightfall. Let's off. All right, let's go do this thing. Apparently, I already had an option to try to, like, seduce my party member, but, like, eh. Dude, I've got a horsey now, dude. I ride around way faster. What's this guy got to say? The sound of your horse's hooves disturbs an old soldier from his small farmhouse. His hand rests on the hilt of a rusted sword. If you're a raider, I got nothing. Uh, I'm Aviana. I'm just passing through. Apologies. I'm Udi's. I'm a bit on edge with the reaper bearing down, demanding ties to be paid to the church. If I don't pay, he says he's taking my farm next. Okay. Um, why are you dressed like a soldier? Eh, I was a soldier. The old king each gave us a plot when we retired. You think warring's hard. Try tilling. Okay. Um, how much do you owe? Well, more than the farm could produce. The reaper will take the shirt off my back, I'm sure, and if that's not enough, he'll take my skin, too. Okay. Uh, who's the reaper? I don't know his name, and I don't care to. He's called it because he reaps tax money for Baron Galtier and the Mercenary King, or at least he did. Okay. Well, it sounds like you got two options. You can pay him, or you can sharpen that blade. He looks down and lets go of the hilt. My fighting days are past. When the rebellion hit, I gave the crop to the rebels. They were good folks fighting a good cause. But they just keep coming back asking for more and more. They're thieves more than rebels now. So long as that's true, the rebels are going to take your crop and the reaper's going to take your money. Yep. Till I starve to death anyways, then I'll be fighting over my bones. Or, or, or... We kill them first. Do nothing and nothing changes. I say kill them for taking ties and the rebels for taking your crop. I haven't heard that talk like that in an epoch. Well, you'll be doing the farm folk a favor, though I don't have much to offer in return. Payment now, or payment later, justice now. All right, cool, man. Let's head out and see if we can find these turds. Who oppresses peasants inside my future kingdom? I'm not, like, I'm not the owner yet, but maybe someday. We can zoom out pretty good, too. All right, let's go have a look around. See if there's anybody in the neighborhood. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of level 2 dudes over here. Oh, yeah, I leveled up, too, didn't I? Hey, I've got a skill tree. All right, so we've got combat, Nephilim, and magic. That's pretty cool. So I can get some physical resistance. If I get critted, I get dodge. I can get my base HP increased. Okay. Fair enough. We can also, when flanking, we get more damage. And then while flanking an enemy, all your resistances go up. Over here, we've got Twilight Initiate. We've got Divine and Unholy Resistance. It looks like most of these are just passives. Okay, I can lower my, my my mana costs. Okay, so I can get some extra spells and stuff too. Yeah, let's do that. I want some divine spells out here, man. Do I get them like right now? Learn spells by finding scrolls. Okay. So I've got to find scrolls first, but I've got Waning Bolt. So unleashes projectiles of cosmic energy dealing both divine and unholy damage. Okay, and then I've got Word of Divine Power that gives me might and motivates me. That one we've already got. That's the heal. And then over here we can summon a devil. Fair enough. Okay, I'm going to guess that I have to go somewhere specific to learn those abilities. Like I have to have like a base building. Empire forces. Oh, there's a bunch of you turds over there, aren't there? Good lord. You're all stronger than me, too. Can I level up, uh, so, like, it said that I've got my units over here. Is there anything that I can do with Orion? 
Like, or does he just automatically do his thing over there? Okay. Well, it looks like if I right-click him right here, I can go to his, like, I can go to, like, his character sheet, but all we can really do is swap out some of his gear. So it's not that big of a deal. We got two soldiers over here. I bet we go get them, dude. Let's go rock these guys. Some free wood right here, too, dude. Went to the forest, got free wood. I assume that's for building buildings and stuff once we get back to our castle, which actually I'm hella hyped about because any game that lets me have a castle is verified goat status. Uh, so there's obstructions and stuff here. What does that do? It makes you inspired. Okay. Let's see if maybe we can bait over to here. I'll move her over to here so that she gets the inspiration buff. I assume that that just makes me have lots and lots of, like, uh... I, I assume that that makes it so that my morale goes up, but I don't see, like, a morale meter or anything anywhere. What does that do? What are you? An orb of resistance. Oh, nice. Okay. Now you see me? I'm going to miss out on my flank right here, which kind of sucks. But she's going to close that gap right there and block off their flank. He might still come down this way and try to flank right there. But so far, the fight seems to be going pretty well. So I'm not going to panic too hard about what I can accomplish here. He's due to go down on the next turn. And then he should be no problem once he's isolated from his homeboy. Get him with the stabities. There you go. Yep. Recreation of the Stabityville Horror. Alright, so units in the graveyard. Gotcha. I'm assuming that there's spells that, like, resurrect people in the graveyard and stuff, too. That'd be my estimate, anyways. And since she's only got one yellow, I can either put a heal on her, which I think is a good idea for right now. That way we heal back up to full after this fight, because I don't want to be behind the eight ball trying to heal myself at the beginning of, like, a different fight. And then I'm going to come back around here to see if maybe I can get a flank on him. As long as he doesn't break base contact, we should be fine. All right, up and in we go. Oh, I can stealth again. I'll do it next turn. You do get, like, a considerable amount of damage. I think she was doing, like, I, I swapped out her weapon, and she leveled up, so maybe she got a damage increase, too. But it felt like when we were in the sewers, she was doing, like, 80 or 90 damage, and when you got the flank, it seems like it goes up to, like, 120 or so. I'm just going to finish it right here. There's no need to do all the stealth and everything. Oh, it's plus 80%. That's That explains it then. So, yeah, you get a pretty considerable buff for running flanking tactics. All right, a little bit of XP. Do we get control of that lumber mill right there? Like, is it going to give me, like, passive wood? Hey, you capture your first building, and as long as it stays in your control, it gives you benefits. Cool. They can be recaptured if not defended. Okay. Uh, I don't really have anybody to hire, so that's not going to be that helpful. But this is Disciples Liberation. I haven't seen actually anything that I dislike this far. I know we're only like 35 minutes in, and I've never played any of the previous games, but this seems kind of like it's doing like a Heroes of Might and Magic thing, which frankly I'm all about, because Heroes of Might and Magic has been woefully left by the wayside with nobody doing anything with it lately. And so that's the vibe that I'm getting right now, is that you get to build up an army, and you can have like griffins and dragons and stuff in your party, and mercenaries, and then like you have these maps that have nodes, and you want to hold them for extra resources. And so like, I'm kind of digging it right now. I'm kind of digging it. Uh, this is an early beta that they gave out to content creators just to check the game out and help out with testing and looking for bugs. Uh, if you enjoyed it, check the game out down below and you can wishlist it over there. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you had a good time and I'll see y'all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the video game skillet. Bye-bye.